All right, what's up, guys? We're back with another podcast episode. This week, we're going to be discussing eyewear again because that's been a hot, trendy topic as of recently. I've been hitting or hitting. I'm way too used to paddles. I've not been hitting eyewear. I've been testing eyewear. <laughs> oh, you've been testing eyewear. So people have been hitting balls at you and you're just <laughs> taking it to the face. And like, oh, let me see how this works. Oh, 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 this one's good. Well, I this do feel like a good. ball magnet sometimes. So, I mean, that might not be entirely wrong. But I mean, anyways... Uh, after that uh, trip to Vegas where you got, you know, body bag, na- na- Nasty Nelson <laughs> match point against Grant, I don't know. Ooh. Yeah, I might need to start wearing like a Kevlar vest or something. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you know, you just you just come through with a jacket full of, um, I don't know, ruby paddles, like on, <laughs> on your shirt. <laughs> That's actually on your kind coat. of funny. All right, come, come at me, guys. I got this. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> That's funny. But yes, talking about eyewear, talking about a 6-0 bag update, uh, the new Vanguard control, and then we're the main topic that we're going to go over is helping you guys understand how you should pick a pickleball paddle. Because if you're new, it can be so overwhelming with so many brands and paddles out there. Like, how do you know what to pick? What's marketing BS? What's swing weight? What's twist weight? What's all of these things? We're going to define and explain all of those things so that it's a little bit easier for you to understand. And then in the kitchen, I have the Minnesota PPA this week, so we'll be talking about that. Let us know if you make it. Sweet, sweet. Let's get to it. All right, well, okay. So first, I put this question out on Instagram, but for those Mm -hmm. of you listening now, if you have any questions about eyewear, leave them in a comment down below because I'm probably going to do a large video that goes over like what brands I wear she should you use do safety <laughs> ratings matter all these different things I've got like six different pairs of safety glasses right now and I'm probably gonna try even more so if you have questions let me know now before I go and make this video so I can put it in there but then the other thing is mm-hmm. uh, more and more pros have started to use it I actually didn't realize this but when we were in Vegas last week yeah. Colin for his first match wore eyewear with Ben and then in later rounds he didn't I think you know probably as usual the first round is like a throwaway for them they can kind of goof around or whatever but I thought it was interesting that him Julian Arnold and then you know a bunch of Julian yeah Julian was wearing it he did take it off after his first game I think Mm because he wasn't playing very well but more and more pros are starting to consider it and I've I've said for a while that I think more people should be using it but I feel like with these pros starting to use it this year, we will see a huge influx of eyewear. Mm, I would agree. I would agree. I mean, you still wear it indoors as well. N- normally, I just wear sunglasses when I'm outside, but indoor, I'm like, I usually don't, to be quite yeah. honest with you. I'm actually at the point now where I just wear something every time I go play pickleball. Like, regardless of, of if I'm indoor or outdoor, I just have something on. I've had some... Uh, sunglasses or not sunglasses but protective eyewear from a pickleball company called Briote. they sent me some it's actually pretty good i've been wearing the carbon eyewear a lot indoors but yeah i'm just at the point now (laughs) brionis no not brionis but it does sound like that yeah (laughs) that's pretty funny but yeah it's just i feel like i've just had a few close calls and the more and more with these paddles i'm just like why would i not just wear and honestly i just when i don't have it on now i just feel less comfortable so I'm mm. like, I, it, I've i actually used it so much now that I don't even notice that I'm wearing the eyewear. Like, there, I don't notice a difference when I have it on and when I don't. So I'm like, well, I might as well just wear it. I see. Do you know what other, like, pros are also wearing as well? Or no? Um, I have seen Anna Bright, <laughs> Lauren Stratman, I think Lena Padigamite. Um, Dang, first try. That was good. Yeah, Anna Lee Waters <laughs> is, has been wearing it for, you know, forever. Um, Do you those know are the only ones wearing? that come to mind. Uh, Anna Lee is Oakley. Um, Anna Bright, I don't know. I think I've seen Georgia. Well, she's just wearing some frames, I think. But I don't know all their brands. Uh, I saw a picture of Thomas Wilson wearing some. I don't know if it was just a model picture for Carbon or if, if he's actually going to use it. But, you know, those are one out there. But, yeah, it's kind of... All over the board. Oh, uh, obvious one. Mary and Megabrasha, they wear Rhea eyewear. Mm. I don't know. Some of those eyewear, I think the thing that's keeping people from wearing it is like just some of them look kind of ugly. Yeah, I won't lie. That 
is definitely a holdup. Like the ones that I'm testing right now, the Briotis, I actually think they are a really good setup. Like there are very cool glasses that have you, like a lot have of good features. Uh, I could probably grab them. Give me one sec. Yeah, grab them and put them on. <laughs> Model for us, Chris. These ones are definitely the type of glasses. I'm sorry to them, uh, this company, but these are definitely the type of eyewear that people make fun of in pickleball. So <laughs> just going to let you know now. And actually, I even made All fun right. of them because they look similar to the carbon. Okay, everybody hold your breath. Oh, gosh. Yeah, they're like <laughs> goggles. Okay. So these are kind of like the yes. carbons when they have the bottom frame or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah. But here's what I will say is really nice about these. So this it's i'm not going to be able to show you but you can pull the bottom frame down one notch and then mm -hmm. actually let me see if i can just do it quick it's kind of hard to do camera's probably not going to be able to see it yeah it's not going to pick it up here but there's vents that you can then reveal or whatever and then if you pull it down one more time you can swap the lenses which is pretty nice but i'll put them back on again for a minute but yeah they oh my gosh these are definitely like women repellent so this is probably good for me at the court since i'm a married man but these are you're not gonna you're not doing yourself those, any favors if you wear these those fit you perfectly i don't know what you're talking about they look they totally <laughs> totally on brand <laughs> i mean it probably would be on brand for me but yeah like as dorky as these ones look i think these are very nice piece of eyewear um but i am much more a fan of eyewear where they don't have a the bottom, bottom rim like Rhea's look pretty good the Oakley's I've worn those are pretty good um and I've been researching a handful of other brands so there are there is eyewear that isn't ugly that works pretty well I think but yeah you definitely have to you have to hunt a little bit for sure <laughs> so yeah that that is kind of the delicate hunt but I'm gonna buy a bunch I just try I bought another pair of Rhea eyewear to try out or whatever um, please I've if already you do test them stuff. out just you know, put them and have somebody smack balls at your face, you know, so we can all watch it in its glory in slow motion, two, 240 frames per second. I don't even got to wait for that. What I should do is have Isaac wear the eyewear because I swear I'm always hitting balls like head height. Dude, I, I was playing with the gearbox again today uh -huh. for a, oh gosh. a video that I'm doing. He hit a ball and I just, that I was like waiting to counter and I just clobbered that thing, but it was like... That counter was like head height, and it just went what? Whipped right by his head. <laughs> Why was it so high up? So I'm assuming that ball was gonna be going way out because your brother's pretty tall. Oh no, it hit it hit the back wall. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it was I was just late on the counter, and I just took a huge swing because I, I saw him winding up, and I was like, I'm gonna murder this ball, <laughs> and uh, so he should probably be the one wearing it so that I don't kill him. <laughs> See, that's the thing with with eyewear and. It's really not these paddles that are, I mean, it is these paddles that are really hot and hitting super hard, but it's like the people like behind it. If you can't control it, and even if you have good control, you never know what's going to happen. But if you don't have good control of it, you know, something will happen. You'll miss hit it, and then those balls will spray. I mean, look at you and your brother. Well, rough. Yep. Rough. Plus, I mean, even just like a ricochet, man, like that happens. That's probably the more frequent <coughs> one, to be honest. Like comes off your partner's paddle and just like bounces off and hits his hits you or, or even even worse it comes off your own paddle and hits you instead. i've done that before yeah no me too it bags <laughs> you, yourself like it's the most i don't know to me it's the most humiliating thing. it's like man i just i lost this point and then i body bagged myself how <laughs> how humiliating is that <laughs> add insult to injury i know but I yeah know. So those are those. And then, you know, it was, I actually really appreciated this. Anna Lee had posted on Twitter. She basically just posted the question that was, <laughs> everyone in pickleball should be wearing eye protection due to the speed that the ball is being hit uh. at such close proximity. And then just said, what are your thoughts on eye protection? And there was a variety <laughs> of answers. There's always going to be a variety of answers. Some people are going to be, they don't want to wear it, which is fine. But, you know, I think as the was, game continues to go this way. Was there any good takes or good comments or responses to that tweet? Or no? I didn't see any like crazy takes. It was just the usual stuff. Some people are like, there's no way I'm wearing dorky eyewear. Other people were like, yeah, I totally agree. Like it was just the usual stuff you'd expect. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know. I'll have a video on it at some point. Probably going to take me a while because <coughs> who knows how many eyewear I'm going to test. But yeah, if you guys got questions, <laughs> let me know because I'll be living in eyewear for a little bit. But anyways, moving on, I did, I have a quick update wait, on wait. the 6-0. Oh, okay. No, 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 I'm, I'm just. Hit me. What if, 
<laughs> no, I'm. You should also. You know, what you should do. You know, it would be really cool if you, for this video you bought yourself the Apple Vision Pro and you're like, hey guys, I came out the court with my new eyewear <laughs> to protect myself, <laughs> and maybe <laughs> you can have some. I don't know, some extra targeting features. Or I don't know. It, just, it would just be really funny to see you come out with that. Can you please put that in your video, everybody? If you're watching or, or watching or listening, put in the comments and tell Chris to. To buy the Apple Vision Pro and test that as a part thirty five hundred dollar yeah easy. purchase for a eyewear video <laughs> yes yes definitely you can return it afterward if you really wanted to but I think now knowing my it. luck someone would hit a ball that would hit me in the the Vision Pro and crack the lens <laughs> nah 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 it, well here here's the thing you see the the crack it but then you be, look thirty five hundred dollars well spent you do thirty five hundred dollars or I go blind you pick <laughs> just saying just saying I mean. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Dude, dude, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you bought, if you if you vlogged that, you went to go buy it and then you went to go play with it, that's that's going to that video's going to do well. I I I guarantee it. <laughs> you know that actually probably would be a good video. The more you say oh, that, the more that. I'm kind of like that'd be kind of fun. Let's go. Let's go. You've you've been content pilled. I love it. Let's go. Uh, no one else can do it but right. you. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got come me. On. You, you know got you me. want to. Oh, yes. <laughs> Who's the real influencer between us now? Ha! It's it's always you. <laughs> All right. Anyways, moving on to the bag. So while we were in Vegas, um, John has the same bag. We've both been using it. The six zero. And his bag. top handle, yeah, the six zero bag that just came out. The top handle, which is kind of like a duffel handle, I think yeah. his just completely ripped off. And then when I got back and I was mm -hmm. coming out of one of my facilities, I noticed that mine has like. A little tear. A tear on one side where if I probably did use it a couple more times, it would mm -hmm. tear off. So just be aware that if you guys use that handle, that might happen to you. Or if you were going to consider buying this bag, be aware. I still really like the bag. I don't use the top handle strap, but it is really sad to see that for like 140 bucks, the top handle is so poorly made because I've seen several posts about this now. And my carbon bag never had this issue. So just keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Very good, very good. Speaking of bags as well, when we were in Vegas, I gave two of my bags for John and Brayden to check out. Um, uh, curious to hear their thoughts on it when they have more time to test it. But the Kickstarter video for my bag will be, or not just the Kickstarter video, but the Kickstarter itself should be launching around the 12th of this month. And then I should have some other videos coming out this week with more information about the bag and kind of like an overview. So you guys can check that out. Um, if you want, uh, so keep on the lookout for that as well. And I think <clears throat> you have anything more else you want to say about the six zero bag or bags in general? No, no, I mean I like the bag. I've been using it; it holds everything fine. Just the quality of that top handle is unfortunate. I feel like at one hundred and forty dollars, you shouldn't be having that. And that's actually what's going to be nice about the ADV bag and the kitchen bag that are coming yeah. out. It's like mm -hmm. finally a bag that's actually built quality and like. A good yeah. job. Like every bag always feels like it has some issue. Like clearly the six zero bag, top handle. Then it's like Selkirk bags, their zippers would always get stuck and they're just kind of awkwardly mesh on shaped. The pro. I've heard yeah, the, stories. The mesh on the pro on the side is like, I don't know, it tears or people get holes in them and whatnot. Although I do like the mesh on the outside of that bag. But yeah, I can see that because it, it can snag, uh, you know, as you're walking around moving it, I don't know, yeah. through whatever environments that you're moving it through. So yep. yeah, now granted, it's a real perfect bag. Both the ADV bag and kitchen bag are going to be like double the most expensive bags in pickleball. But this is true. You know, if you care about bags and you want <clears throat> something that's feature rich and probably going to last, it's probably going to be these. Because I mean that that kitchen bag ha is like same materials. At least it seemed like the Peter McKinnon bag that we use for our yes. cameras. And like those things are built like a freaking tank. Yeah, those and those bags are like. I would say S tier. They're you know in the three hundred to four hundred dollar range of those things. I mean they're they're made and built to carry around camera gear that's in the you know thousands, even like tens of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. So yeah, the kitchen bag is made with that same material. That's definitely S tier. I would probably say my bag, although the materials are good, I'd probably say it's closer to A tier, but um, still very high quality. Uh, but yeah, I mean if you care about you know your bags and you know. Like, you know, I've said it and you've said it now too, you know, buy once, cry once. And, you yeah. know, these bags can be used for, you know, multiple things, right? You know, they're made for to carry other stuff other than just pickleball gear, but they're made for travel. They're made for durability. You know, these things are 
you know, top of mind in some of these bags. So I don't know. I always say, like I said, buy once, cry once, you know? So you don't have I am definitely issues with the handle mindset. with the six zero. I know you are now. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, with these hats you be you be purchasing, shoot, you know. <laughs> you know what's funny with the melon hats though. While it is buy once, cry once, because that one you gave me is still going strong. For me, it's been more like <laughs> buy multiple times, cry every time I buy it because I just keep buying them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't even need more, but I'm like, ooh, that's a nice color. I want that one. Uh, look at you now. Look at you. You're wearing color now. I've you've changed from like last year. Before it was black and blue, like you know. And now See, it's funny you say that because right now I'm just wearing black and white. <laughs> I mean, this is true. This is true. But now you know you've got some color in your your wardrobe now. I'm I'm impressed. You know. Yeah. Come to the bright side, Mr. Brightside. That's right. We're trying. <laughs> But all right, let's move on. Let's talk about the Vanguard Control. So this launched like a week ago. I think it launched while we were in Vegas. Or no, it was like right after we got back from Vegas. (laughs) Right after. It was like this Tuesday. It was last Tuesday. Yeah, something like that. About a week ago now. And I have gotten to hit it very briefly, but it was not a priority of mine. Um, But, you know, it sounds like enough people want to see a review, so I probably will do one on it yeah I but i have too. a lot of thoughts on this oh, battle because <laughs> is it, yeah it's yeah is it too little too late i know i know that's what's going through your head right and that is for sure one of the things going through my head because i'm like <clears throat> selkirk if you made this a year and a half ago this paddle would be the bomb <laughs> like a year and a half ago rpms would have been crushing it like you update your vanguard 2.0 Gen 1 paddles are kind of all the craze. Like, you are in a very good spot. Mm -hmm. But no, it comes out so late to the party. And, like, here's one of my my bigger complaints. Mm -hmm. There's so many control paddles in Selkirk now. I'm like, why do we need so many of, like, a similar... So, like, you have the SOK Halo, very control-oriented. Now you've got the Vanguard Control, and then you've also got the control air. So like, here's how I'll define why someone might care about these differences. Halo, made yep. in China. Vanguard control, made in USA. To some of you, mm-hmm. it's going to matter a lot. Higher spin on the Vanguard, lower on the Halo. Yes. Probably a little bit more pop on the Vanguard and a more manageable swing weight for more people. But then it's like so weird because it's $200 and then the control air is spray on grit, which isn't going to last as long. But then the paddle's 250 and it's like, I just don't know why we need three in like a similar territory. It just feels kind of odd to me. I mean, no, like there, there are different price points, right? Like, so, I mean, they're all control centric and I would say it's easiest to differentiate the halo because it's affordable. And I think... <clears throat> The performance of the Halo is just not as good as the other two, as the Lux Control Air or the Vanguard Control. I would say that the Lux, I mean, really, it's just that design. You're paying for kind of like that premium look and design. And I think, in my opinion, the Lux Control Air, I would say, has a tad bit more pop than the Vanguard Control. Although, if you care about durability and spin, like you you go with the Vanguard Control. And I would probably, you know, recommend the Vanguard Control over the Lux, um, although I think <clears throat> I prefer the feel of the Lux just a little bit more, but I think overall most people should go with the Vanguard control. If if you're willing to spend that amount of money and you didn't need something that was unibody or thermoformed, like go with the Vanguard control. It's like better performance, I think, or more, more bang for your buck for sure, you know? Yeah, one of the things that like perplexes me about <clears throat> it is I'm like, okay, when I think of, I actually wrote about this in my newsletter Mm-hmm. But I was talking about like, okay, the Vanguard control is probably not targeted at most people who read my newsletter, right? Like you're going to no, have a lot of paddle not. nerds. They want to see high tech stuff. But then I'm like, okay, that means you're probably targeting people who are less paddle savvy and don't care as much about performance. They might care, but like not as much. So then at that point, I'm like, why wouldn't you that person just buy a Halo? Because it's cheaper. So it feels like... I don't know. Obviously, there's a lifetime warranty. It, like, I think there are mm-hmm. reasons you might want to choose it, but it just feels so confusing to me that that is all we got with the Vanguard control. Like, they updated the handle to an octagon. Okay, that's like mm-hmm. two and a half years late. 
Then you get the raw carbon fiber face fairly late, but it's made in the U.S. and all the U.S. companies took a while to figure that out. I just feel like for a company that always talks about like, hey, we want to be like on the bleeding edge of innovation. We have labs to like port stuff over. I'm like, okay, so our innovation on this one was Gen 1, raw carbon fiber, and we made the handle an octagon. I'm like, yeah, I mean, innovation. <laughs> I would have to agree. I think they are a little late <clears throat> to the party a little bit, but at the same time, um, I don't know, that peel ply does feel a lot better, I would say, than other peel plies. It does out feel there. different. I will say that. I can tell when I touch it. Yeah, I can t I can see it. Like when I look at it, I can see like the striations that go up and down. And um I don't know, like I think it's because, you know, Selkirk's a bigger company, right? So, you know, being able to push something out quickly and then having like the capacity to sell it for the volume that they probably move is probably a little bit more difficult, but I totally agree. I feel like if this came out, like even, I don't know, six months ago or like a year ago, six months to a year ago, like it still would have been amazing, you know? And it's not that it's bad now. It's just cause you know, you and I, we see so many good paddles yeah, out there. Right. And <clears throat> at more affordable prices at yep. that as well. Uh, so it's kind of weird to see it coming out now but i mean you and i talk about this all the time too that we think that pickleball is still somewhat in an infancy stage for most people getting into the game so and and, and you and i've talked about it that the best paddle for most people getting to the game should probably still be some sort of raw carbon fiber gen one yeah. paddle like you know you don't need that pop and the power that you know th that you and i are looking for that we've played with yeah right so totally i i think it's I think it's okay, but I think if through the lens of us and what we do, yeah. it's not, you know? Totally. So I, I totally get it. But I see what you're saying. Like, you know, the people who read your newsletter and maybe the people who, you know, are just getting into the game who don't read your newsletter, you know, they might see it as great, but you're like, oh, this is old news, right? So, yep. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how many Vanguard control paddles you'll see out in the wild. But I feel like you're going to be seeing a lot more of them. Just Yeah, know, I mean, I, it's Selkirk. Just by nature, like... <laughs> you're going to see the paddles probably everywhere. And I think the biggest credits that I would probably give this paddle, mm -hmm. you know, to not just rag on it the entire time, I think the lifetime warranty, for some of you, that's going to matter. Yeah. However, I did do a survey in my newsletter because I was very curious about this. I said, yeah, how, much how many times have you actually used a warranty? And <clears throat> almost 60% of people, I think there was like 400... 50 responses or somewhere in the 400 range of responses. And it was like 60% said never used it once. Uh, 27 said I've used it once, then 11% twice, and then like 7% three plus times. So like, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, half of you have never even claimed one. So I'm like, I don't even know that lifetime warranty matters to most people in pickleball. I think it's a nice selling point. I think companies, it's good that they <laughs> offer it, but uh, I just thought that was kind of fascinating. But anyways, that's one benefit. And then I think I was watching one of the Selkirk videos with uh, Mike and Rob, and they talked about you know the manufacturing process they're doing. It's I, if I'm recalling correctly, they said something about the they were able to make the grit more consistent, unlike a lot of the competitors. And I will say, if they are able to make that claim and it is more consistent, that is something that I think is a valuable selling point because with tons of brands, we've all seen it. One is super gritty, and then another yeah. one's not. Like, yeah, Yola's one's not. one of the worst culprits for this. So if you can guarantee that it will always be in a very tight range, that's mm -hmm. a nice selling point. And Selkirk, I actually think I wrote about this in my newsletter too. The other props I'll give them is very rarely have I ever had them or ever seen them have big paddle variants. Like If you buy a Power Air, you know the grit level you're going to get. You know what to expect yeah. from the paddle. Like. Pretty much all their paddles are like that. There's not like this big variance. I'm not saying it's never happened, but mm -hmm. far less than the other big brands in pickleball. So if that's true, yeah, consistent 2,000 RPMs for the Vanguard control, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's that's like uh, what that's bottom of top tier. Like that's like I mean that's I just like to say that's top tier at this point. Like if you're 2,000 plus, like you're plus. a good paddle. Yeah, you know what's interesting is that all the Selkirk pros 
right? At least on the women's side, a lot of them switched to the Vanguard control. And like I, I saw Paris Todd playing with it, uh, Judah Castillo, Rachel Rohrbacher. Um, and it's, it's interesting because I would have thought the 006 would be kind of like the winner, right? Right. But it's not. Uh, and I don't know if that has to do with like the weight and the swing weight because the swing weights on the Vanguard controls across all three of them are, are fairly low. They're pretty low. Yeah, it just kind of goes to show you what, I guess, you know, the pros, at least on the women's side, kind of um, favor, right? I, I, I think on the men's side, I don't, I don't know if any of the men self so. playing. They're all still playing with either the Power Air or the 002. So it's just, I don't know, kind of fascinating to me to see what players, you know, are looking for, at least on the pro level, like from their paddles and from their equipment, you know? Yeah. I think Paris did go back to, or did go to a Power Air. She was using the Vanguard control, but I think this last tournament she was using a Power Air. At least she did for singles. I don't know about uh, doubles. Dubs. And then I guess when she comes to the Minnesota PPA, I can confirm what she's using there. But okay. yeah, it is always interesting to see see what the top people are using for sure. All right, well, cool. Well, I mean, I don't have much else to say about the Vanguard control, but I am going to make a full review on it. It should be coming out sometime this week but it was just i don't know it was for me it was kind of low on my priority list as well because i you know you and i were just like okay it's a vr 2.0 gen 1 you know regular sandwich paddle nothing real interesting except for the raw carbon fiber that is like you said fairly nice i i will say that peel ply does feel really nice probably the best it does. in my opinion that i feel that i've i felt across many other paddles out there it's hard to explain it like <clears throat> the I don't, I, I don't know how to explain it. You just have to touch it, and you can kind of tell the difference. It, it reminds me, I think, of like the Paddle Tech or even the Engage, which I, I would not be surprised if they're getting their raw carbon fiber from the same manufacturer, and that's why they feel similar because it's mm-hmm. there. Are, I'm sure there's not many U.S. factories making those sheets, but it, it's like not sticky, but it's like very grabby <laughs> or dense. I, I don't have the words for it, but if you touch it, you can probably tell the difference. Yeah, it feels <clears throat> very gritty, like really fine and granular in one direction versus the other direction. And you're right, like <clears throat> it it feels like there's more grooves in like I don't know, one direction than the other. It almost it's almost as if like there's strings that are going up and down it. That's what it feels like to me. That's how I would describe how it looks and how it feels. Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, we can move <laughs> on from that. You just had uh something big this evening. Uh, yes. Uh, shoot. I'm so beat. I just drove back from Oklahoma city. Uh, it's about an hour and a half away. We had the semifinals, uh, match for the Oklahoma pickleball premier league. And Oh wait, hang on, hang on. Before we go any further, is your friend okay with me billing her for talking about this? Cause I said we were going <laughs> to bill her every time we <laughs> mentioned it. Hey, you know, here's the thing. Shout outs to Jenna. Jenna said that she, messaged you on ig and was like she's really trying to set up this exhibition match where you create your team and we create ours so you should get i totally (laughs) i wonder if it went to my filter dms because i don't i don't think i ever saw this yeah yeah i don't think you ever saw it he's like chris hasn't hit me back i was like yo chris gets so many dms it's you know (laughs) here i'm totally gonna have to go look for that while you tell the story i'm actually gonna try and find this message okay okay so um Basically, uh, Jen is on my team, and uh, I mean, you and I, we talked about it on the pod before that we should do some sort of exhibition match. Like, you create a team, you know, that's Chris's team, and you gather some pros from Minnesota, and then I pick a team from here from Oklahoma, and we play a team style match. You know, I don't know when or yeah. where, but we should definitely make that happen. It'd be so funny. I think now that would be like, sick for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, that's really all we're gonna talk about. And I mean, Jenna message you trying to make it happen we don't know when or where but i think we'll 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 definitely make that happen and i don't know for sure my team i got shoot chris hayworth kale jenna i mean shoot if we go to dream break wait chris ah. hayworth isn't on your current team is it or is he he's not he's not but i mean you can pick anybody you want from from minnesota no 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 no. you got to use your current team you don't get to just start pulling chris hayworth (laughs) and stuff in here 
<laughs> what? Nah, 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 dude. Shoot. Well, you know what? You you and Jenna, you guys can figure out the logistics. I don't really care. I totally can't. Tell her to message me again because I can't find. I've searched my filtered and my regular and I can't find it. So okay, okay, maybe okay. maybe she messaged a different pickleball studio. <laughs> there, you, you do have a lot of... Uh, don't you have a lot of like accounts that have tried to become you? Who no, impersonation. I just, well, no, I mean, I, there's stuff. maybe one, but what frequently happens is people tag or DM the pickleball studio podcast Instagram page. I just took that so that no one else would take it, but I'm like, yeah, no, like we don't use this, guys. I just did it so someone couldn't take it. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Okay, anyways, but, anyways, yeah, you I'll made it know. to the semifinals, right? Okay, well, here's the thing make it to the semifinals is a stretch because it's the first season we don't have that many teams so essentially every single team makes it to the semifinals all the matches that we had before don't really account you know what i mean i see and i will tell you right now that my team we have not won a match until (laughs) tonight okay i when you texted me i was so proud and happy for you yeah and now i hear this and i'm like oh yeah i see We've lost, I think, like two dream breakers, you know, in our previous matches. And but you know what? It doesn't matter because tonight everybody knew that tonight was the match that was going to count. And there were hard fought matches for sure. Dude, in the last game. So uh, if we, uh, we we were one in we were two and one. So my team was up two and the other team was up uh, one. And. I think at one point we were down like 9-2. We play one game up to 15, right? And uh, Chase Holderman is another uh, dude who on my team, he's a beast. He plays pro as well. But he was looking at me, he's like, Will, I don't want to play a dream breaker, man. <laughs> and then I was like, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, Chase. I got you, boss. <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but like it's all like a big blur to me. But uh, we just, we just, I don't know stuck it out and yo man it it's true the comeback the, the comeback score is true when you're when the score is like seven one or like nine two nine three or something like that that's when you make those big runs for whatever reason and i don't know what it is okay so wait so you did you win that one we won that one yeah Shoot. we came back and we won that one I from think 16, three nine 14. yeah like something like that i don't even remember but yeah we won 16 we came back did anyone 16, smash 14. a paddle uh, nobody smashed a paddle thank goodness but <laughs> You know, this was being streamed. There's people out in the crowd. No, I can't smash the paddle. You know, trust me. Fair there's enough, times when enough. I wanted to chuck a paddle. You've seen me, you know, when I'm like, oh, I want to, you know, freaking just toss this paddle. But I don't know. I was having, for some reason, I was having a good time. Um, uh, and it's hard. So when when I'm traveling, like, you know, like driving like an hour and a half, you know, and then, you know, sometimes you deal with traffic or whatnot. And I get there. I don't really have time to like kind of get in the groove to warm up you know it's hard to get into a really competitive like mindset to play a really competitive game because i'm playing with people who you know compete five oaks some of them compete in pro and to get into that mindset like off the get-go is really hard especially for me you know me i'm going out there warming up and slides you know what I'm yeah saying? yeah so. that's exactly what i would <laughs> expect right At, while probably testing a new paddle <laughs> yeah exactly testing new paddle i will say i did play with the thrive tonight uh oh. i played with the blackout because it would do the only games that i've gotten was when we were in las vegas and we were playing with you know the azul and the blackout so i came back and i did practice sunday like afternoon with the 006 which is the current paddle that i use but i was like dude it's not i i I don't know. I was just spraying balls that my timing was off. And I was like, okay, like if I'm competing tomorrow and the match counts, I was like, I just got to play something right now that I've had, I don't know, yeah. recent time with. So that's what I did. And I don't know. I did well. I mean, we, we won. We did have to go to a dream breaker. And now we're in the finals. Yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> lost, lost every match except one and made hey, it to the finals. That's a, hey, when it counts, it counts. You know what I mean? That's, that's how I you mean, know. That's how you're you know. not wrong. You're not wrong. The only one that mattered, you won the one that mattered. Mm-hmm. But all I'm saying exactly. is now after hearing this current team's record, uh-huh. I think if you stick stay this same team and I get to assemble my team, I don't know if I'm feeling if I'm too worried now. Oh, you you should be worried because they got you on on their team. So I'll, well, here's the thing. Worried. 
I know I'm going to get tired, especially now that I've ran my mouth. I'll be the one that just gets absolutely annihilated. <laughs> so all I got to do is pull enough weight, just enough weight that the rest of my team does fine, and I, we'll be fine. Okay. All right. We're going to make it happen. <laughs> we we'll make this happen this. one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. That's too funny. <clears throat> Next up, primary topic. Okay. How to pick the best paddle for you this yes is probably every i don't know budding pickleball stars i don't know nightmare i would say there's so many choices you know Go way too Central. many choices it'll you pull up youtube all the different reviews they're probably going through your videos some of mine john hughes Braden. it's just like oh my gosh what do i do yep. where do i begin where do i begin? exactly so in this section of the pod we just wanted to try and make it as simple in this complex world of paddles on what you should choose or how you can make a decision, what things are actually important, what things are marketing fluff, what can you ignore, and so on. So first thing I wanna start with, because I think it's one of the most important things that still is not adopted by enough manufacturers, though props to Selkirk, I saw them put the swing weight and possibly the twist weight on the Vanguard, so they progress. Did. That was that was me. <laughs> I totally believe that was you. And, you know, now that I know it's you, you should have done that sooner. Now I'm taking away the props. <laughs> no, here's the thing. Like, I just put it in because I asked them or we talk about it, but I'm like, okay. And they, they say, okay, we'll think about it. Yeah, we'll do it eventually. So in one of my latest videos I made for them, I just listed it on the video. And then the marketing team got a hold of it. They're like, okay, well, we'll list it as on the video. Should we just add this to the site now and so they did and i was like okay there you go <laughs> you're the hero we needed you're the hero we needed <laughs> yes all right mm. swing weight guys this is the metric that in terms of figuring out how heavy a paddle is probably the most relevant at the moment so basically swing weight is just a number that can tell you how hard or how easy it's going to be able to swing so that number can range from as low as like 90 all the way up to I've seen as high on a stock paddle as like 135, which is extremely high. So if you want some ranges to make it a little bit easier to understand, anything below 110 swing weight, generally speaking, that's going to feel pretty easy to swing. If you're wanting a lighter, fast paddle, you probably want something below 110. Anything between 110 and 118 is going to be pretty average for most paddles. Mm -hmm. And then 119 to 124, 125, that's a lot of the heavier elongated paddles. Those are going to feel pretty heavy to swing. Probably you might be a higher level player if you're using that. It's going to feel pretty heavy. Once you go past 125, we're in the thick boy super heavy sumo wrestling, like not saying no one should use it, but it's so heavy that the vast majority of pickleball players shouldn't even be looking at a paddle that heavy. Yeah. And if you don't have proper technique down, those paddles can give you like problems, like health problems, like el tennis elbow or yes. injuries with your wrist. And um, it's probably something you should avoid. And I know Chris is talking about it right now like swing weight and giving these numbers. If you don't know where to find these numbers, he has a spreadsheet. You can go check it out on his website. There's a few other pickleball paddle reviewers that have spreadsheets that list, um, you know, a lot of paddles and their swing weights. So you can kind of look as well. So I know John has one. Braden has a spreadsheet as well, right? Hey, did they pay us for that shout out? Oh, uh, I don't know. You can send them an invoice later. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just kidding. Yes, John, John, Braden, I will have spreadsheets if you want to check them out. You yeah. can find all those stats in there because most companies don't publish swing weight. As important of a metric as it is, it still hasn't been adopted by a lot of the pickleball brands out there. Yeah. And even if you um, don't see or you can't find it, right, I would say that a rule of thumb, if you're looking for something that's easier to swing, right, any of the more standard shape paddles, right, or short, like just non-elongated will have better swing weights. Um, yes. When I say better, I mean lower swing weights. So you can kind of go off on, off of that. And then also if they are thinner, so 13 millimeter, 14 millimeter paddles tend to have lower swing weights. So if yes. that is something that you want to look for or you have an idea of the range, um, 
and you don't have time to, I guess, look up or research, you know, or look through a spreadsheet, um, those are common traits you can kind of look for to get a starting point and a starting base of swing weight. Yes, that's, yeah, that's all totally perfect. And that kind of leads into the next thing. And they're, they're a little bit combined, but it's like, okay, if swing weight is so important, does static weight even matter? And this is actually something that I think is really important because a lot of people in pickleball still to this day, they go, I need an eight ounce paddle. I need a 7.6 ounce paddle, but it's not actually the weight of the paddle that you want because I can give you two paddles that are the same exact weight and one is gonna feel so heavy and slow in your hand and the other one is gonna feel fast. In fact, I could give you a paddle that's heavier by probably half an ounce, like 8.5 ounces or nine ounces, and then give you another one that's 8.5 or eight ounces, and you would say the nine ounce one's heavier. And that's where the balance and swing weight comes into play. So yes, static weight matters to a point. Most people probably shouldn't be swinging a nine ounce plus paddle, but it does not matter to the extent that most people think. If you're only basing your purchasing decision off of does this paddle weigh eight ounces or 8.9 or 7.9 or whatever? You probably shouldn't be doing that anymore. Swing weight is significantly more important than the static mm-hmm. weight. And the static weight doesn't tell you much, right? Does this, st- yeah. the static weight doesn't tell you is all that weight in the handle is all of it in or the like head, right? Yep. It doesn't put this in the if book. If it's all of in Q. the head. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put it in the book <laughs> of Q. If it's all in the head, that paddle is going to feel super heavy to swing. If all the weights in the handle, gonna feel easier to swing so yeah yeah. you have the example that you wrote down here just like think of a hammer right so you held the hammer at the you know the bottom base of the handle and you swing it like you know it's gonna feel fairly heavy harder to swing harder to maneuver but then if you take that same hammer and you flipped it upside down and you held it by um you know the metal the head head, and then you yeah exactly you swing it around it'll be easier to swing way easier to maneuver the static weight you didn't change it you really just flipped it like the weight distribution just changed right so you can kind of use that metaphor to kind of get a better idea of what we talk about or how important swing weight is and can be yep and it applies very similarly uh even for a pickleball paddle right like if you were hitting a nail into a piece of wood and you tried to do that holding the heavy part of the hammer in your hand it's going to yep. be really hard to hit that nail into the board. Similarly with a pickleball, if all of the weight is in the handle, the ball might push your paddle around, but the more weight is in your head, it will plow through the ball even more. So if you ever hear someone say, oh, this paddle has a lot of plow through, like it just plows through the ball. A lot of times it probably means there's more weight in the head mm-hmm. and it will push the ball instead of the ball pushing the paddle. Yes. Yes. All right. Is there anything else you want to go over? when it comes to swing weight? Nope, that's pretty much okay. it. We can move on to the counterpart of that now, which is yes. twist weight. Twist weight. So twist weight is basically, I'll grab a paddle and show you guys. Twist weight is basically when a ball hits the edges of your paddle, how mm-hmm. much does it twist left or right? And the higher the number is, often means better. So again for a range if it's below five incredibly incredibly awful twist weight twist weight below six it's not great but there are definitely paddles that are workable below six like if you're between like 5.6 and six it's an okay range but not ideal if you are around like the 6.5 and up area that's a pretty acceptable twist weight A lot of paddles in that range are very solid. A lot of thermoformed paddles are in that range. If you are seven plus, you are like high twist weight, probably going to feel like a very stable paddle. The sweet spot is going to feel good. That's the easiest range I can give. Now, before we go too much deeper on this, a high twist weight does not always perfectly correlate with it being a good sweet spot. For the vast majority of paddles out there, I would say the higher that number is, the better it will feel. And the lower, usually the worse it's going to feel. However, it's not 100% perfect. There have definitely been paddles I've seen with like a seven twist weight out of the box. They don't feel like they have very good um, Hmm. sweet spots. And that can be the material they're made out of, how thick the core is, 
and so on. But generally speaking, more often than not, you can use this number as a gauge to decide how good the sweet spot is. Like edgeless paddles, a yeah. lot of times they're below six or they're in the really low six range. And then if you have that same paddle, but with an edge guard, like the double black diamond versus the double black diamond infinity. Infinity. Mm-hmm. The, the twist weight is much higher on the one with the edge guard and it feels much more stable. So that's what twist weight is. It doesn't, it's not saying here's how large the sweet spot is, but a lot of times it correlates. That, it correlates. Yeah. yeah. Let's kind of go through your spreadsheet right now. Let's like uh, give the audience just some paddles that are on your list for good twist weight. And, you know, we'll go back and list some with good swing weights or that we think are good swing weights as well. So let's see. Let's go through twist weight. So I'm I'm looking through this list right now from highest twist weight down. Lisa, your highest on this is actually an Onyx paddle. I think Mayhem it's an Max Onyx paddle, control. isn't it? Yeah. The Mayhem Max Control. I don't even, I have never even heard of this paddle. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, okay. All right, all right we'll, we'll look at some paddles that people might know. Okay, the Engage Pursuits, um, yep. uh, Pursuit MX60 and EX, they're very high, like 7.85 and 8.2, so top tier uh, swing weight. Let's see, you got, uh, I mean, twist weight, I mean, the Carbon 2X 16 millimeter, also fairly high. A, your most loved paddle, the Onyx Z5 is on here. <laughs> I know that that's the Onyx Z5 is a great example of one where it clearly does not correlate because that sweet spot sucks. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, a good paddle that you and I have talked about, the Mach 2 4 is a 16 millimeter uh, twist weight of 7.22. Very good. Um, yep. We Here we have the Selkirk Lux Control Air S2. Um, fairly high on the list. Uh, let's see, Vanguard Control. Uh, all the shapes are fairly high up here. The Paddletech Wave version 3. Um, and... Uh, See, Mach 2 4 is a 4. And then something like the the double black diamond is like a 6.5, I think. Yeah, let me take a look. Double black diamond. Yep, 60 double black diamond. In, yeah, 6.59. You're almost right there on the money. Uh, do you remember how much lower the double black diamond infinity was? I see. think it was between like 5.9 and 6.1. Oh, you don't even have this on your spreadsheet. At least I don't see it. Oh, really? I. I thought I did, but maybe I forgot to add that one in there. Occasionally, okay. there's one that I miss. All right. So, I mean, these are just, I don't know, some paddles out here that you guys can take a look. Definitely take a look at the spreadsheet if you guys want to go through the list and have an idea. Um, you know, so there you have it. Let's go through real quick some of the swing weight paddles that you have. Let's look at the highest swing weight paddle you have. Um, oh, Dang, the one you have highest on the list is the Pursuit MX60, which also had a very good twist weight as well, but that's here at 137. And I um, think that's the that was the original Pursuit. That's not the Pro. Oh, that's not the Pro. Okay. I wonder if the yep. Pro is in here. I don't see it. It is, but it's a lot lower. The swing weight was lower. probably in the 120s. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, well, then the next highest is, oh, the Franklin, the new Franklin raw carbon fiber, the FS Tour Dynasty 60 millimeter. It's like 134 Very stock. Yep. I, I heard that's the one that JW plays with, right? Yeah. And that man still adds lead tape because he's got yeah. what? freak of a forearm. Like that guy. That's crazy. His forearm's bigger than my entire, like two of my biceps. Yeah. Um, okay. Moving down to like the 128-ish range or high 120s, we got the Vatic Prism V7, which I do like, uh, you know, for driving. Obviously, the Pro drives, um, you know, those are like 20 millimeter thick paddles. Uh, Bread and Butter Filth is at 125. Um, yep. That you just showed. I like that one. Go way down. Let's give. Yeah. Let's show them like what a lower number would look like. All right. What 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 range are we looking for? Like go to the 90s. Like these are like the lowest of low paddles. Mm. Damn, man, there's a lot of paddles up in here. Okay, let's see. We have in the 90s. Okay, you got, oh, the Groovin' Movin' 13S, 99, a favorite of mine. Um, yep. A lot of the Gearbox paddles, like the CX, yes. like older CX-11, like Powers, those are in there. Yola Radius. Um, let me see. CX-14H, the Pro Kenix paddles are, are down there. Um, and I mean, however, there's not much else in here in the nineties that are notable, but you have a few in the hundreds, um, you know, carbon 
2 13 millimeter the z5 makes another appearance down here <laughs> <laughs> z5 it's everywhere you can't avoid it it's, yeah you can't avoid it um uh moving 16 s uh nothing else well anyways kind of like post- if they want yeah. more they can they can yeah, go they check can look the at spreadsheet it. it's on my website pickleballstudio.com but all that to say guys like these are you know it's different for every person what you're going to want, right? And one thing I actually want to just circle back to swing weight because a lot of people think, oh, higher number bad, lower number better. And that's not necessarily true. It depends what you want, right? Like mm-hmm. a lower number often going to mean you get faster hand speed. So if you at the net, if hand speed's important to you, then that's you probably want a lower number. But the ball might push your paddle around more. You might not get as much power when you take a big swing. Mm-hmm. Higher swing weight paddles, when you take a big swing, the paddle's going to clobber the ball. But yes. it's slower to maneuver. So it's it's just trade-offs. One is not inherently better than another. My brother, he likes his paddles in the like 123 range. I don't love that range, but I can use it if I have to. I'm more of like a 115 kind of guy. So it's all personal preference. Yeah. I think I'm in the <clears throat> 118 to like low 120s i would say is where i kind of fall because i do like to drive the ball um but sometimes when i'm playing against really fast or you know really good opponents who like to speed up the ball at me i'm like okay i need something faster so i can kind of compete you know so it's it's almost i think i'm almost moving to the point where like when i play singles it's a different paddle and when i play doubles it's a different paddle with different specs almost yeah totally Totally. All right. Well, moving on. Next one is handle length. This one is fairly easy for the most part. It's Mm -hmm. very largely personal preference, guys. If if I had to give some general uh, ideas for you, if you have a two handed backhand, you come from tennis, putting two hands on the paddle is important. Minimum length that I'm going to recommend is five point five inches. If it's really important to you and you want a lot of space, five point seven five to six inches plus is probably what you're gonna want. Usually six inches plus feels a little bit better for two hands. And then um, if you only use one hand, anything like 5.3 and below, probably gonna be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Not as many companies are making really short handles like five inches and below these days, but if it's important to you, it does exist. So really the only thing that I would tell you is if a two-handed backhand is important, 5.5 5.5 inch plus is what you want. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't have much else to say about handle length. Like that's pretty much it for me as well. Although handle shape, you know, make sure that's octagonal. You can Octagon. feel the bubbles. Yes. Make sure you can feel that and no exposed polymer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. For those of you who don't know, exposed polymer is when, so the core is made of polymer, and if you took the edge guard off of most paddles, you would see the exposed core and the polymer sheet. And a lot of times, this isn't as relevant anymore. Most paddles have fixed this, but in the past, the handles used to be very cheaply made, and you could press your hand into the core of your paddle, and it just felt so cheap. In fact, yeah. before the Vanguard control, the old Vanguard was like that, and it wasn't great. So yeah. props to Selkirk <laughs> for fixing that. <laughs> all right cool cool all right now moving on we have shape and like shape is also a personal preference i think shape for the most part in my opinion deals more with like it correlates more with the swing weight and the twist weight you know obviously a yes. longer shape um it gives you a higher swing weight you know because it's longer and then a shorter shape usually wider is a lower swing weight and usually typically has better twist weight as well because you have more mass on the edges and on the side. So it twists a little bit less, um, you know, shorter and wider, you get a more even sweet spot, right? It is, um, I guess closer to the handle as well. Whereas a elongated paddle, the sweet spot is kind of like, like oblong, like an oval kind of that's stretched, you know, uh, from the, uh, you know, on vertically on the paddle. So, I mean, that, I think it correlates more to swing weight, twist weight more than anything. Yeah. So if you want faster hand speed and higher twist weight, a standard shaped <clears throat> paddle like the Veloir Forza Mach 2, the Annalee, um, not Bantam. Why am I? Or is it Bantam? Yeah, Bantam. I think it's the Bantam. Um, 
Yep, that shape. Um, yeah, the I mean, there's lots of or the Epic the Halo or Max. Yeah, Halo Max. Yep. yep. Those are ones like that. The paddles you're looking for. Yep. So standard shape, faster hand speed, higher twist weight. Usually means better sweet spot, but less reach. Elongated paddle. You're gonna get more reach, but you will suffer a loss in the sweet spot. But you will gain reach and frequently you gain power. Where a standard power shape paddle leverage. usually doesn't have as much. Yeah, and you know what's funny is that. We say elongated, but those like point, I don't know, two, five inches or whatever. When you, when you put them side by side, it doesn't look like much. I'm like, am I getting no. that? Am I really getting that much more reach? And really yeah. the answer is no. I think, I think for the most part it's no, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a subconscious thing. And I think people just like it for the extra leverage, you know, for the long yeah. battle to, to you know, get more power on their drives and potentially generate more paddle head speed to create more RPM and spin. And that moves on to the next thing about paddles, which is spin. Like, and you said it rightfully so, don't freak out too much about the RPM and the spin numbers on these paddles. Like, first of all, the test that you do that all the other paddle reviewers do, like while it's not perfect, like it's just kind of like a base, but it's it's not something that everybody should, I don't know, focus on too much and they do and and it's also not perfect you know and i know you guys yeah. try to do your best to make it as accurate as possible but like at the end of the day it doesn't really matter all too much to be quite honest with you the yeah. only thing i'd tell people with spin is these days anything over 2000 rpm that's going to be in like usually means the highest tier of spin below that 1800 when I get below 1800, I can start feeling a, a difference and I'm not very happy with it. Below 1500, it's just like a <laughs> bad don't, spin. Don't even try. <laughs> yeah, like it's, you probably don't want it. What I tell people these days is it's way more important that you avoid paddles if spin is important to you that are less than 1500 RPM rather than focusing on this paddle in a spreadsheet has a hundred more RPMs than this one. Like if you are getting that minute with it, it does not matter. And the main reason I say that is there's variance in the paddles that companies are producing. Sometimes you get a yeah. smoother one. Sometimes you get a grittier one that could throw off the results. So while you're looking at a paddle going, Hey, that's 2000 RPMs. The one you get might not even have that. Now, if their quality control standards are higher, you might, but you guys really just don't need to worry about it. The difference between like 15th and first in my spreadsheet is a difference of like 100 RPM or 150. And on the court, you're not going to feel that difference. Like usually I tell people about a 300 RPM gap. That's where you start start noticing. And also if you're like a 3.5 and below player, like, <laughs> like you, spin yeah, is probably not the thing that should be your highest priority. <laughs> you good there, Will? You just you just sitting there and just laughing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry about it. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Will night. Will had some kind of thought there and decided to just laugh. I don't know what I just witnessed. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You were going to make a 3-5 joke about me. I know you were. Uh, <laughs> All right, moving save on. Save it for another day, Will. <laughs> yeah, saving it for another one. Saving it for another day. All right. All right, Next moving up. on because we're getting long here so i'm gonna i'm gonna blast through some of these a little quicker than i had originally Let's planned go. on mm -hmm. edgeless and edge paddles generally speaking paddles with an edge guard are gonna have a larger sweet spot because they have that perimeter weighting which is what bumps up your twist weight and if you ever want to bump up the twist weight on one of your paddles you can just add lead tape on the sides of it no, no, no. and that's tungsten an easy way tape. Tungsten so tape. i forgot tungsten tape Braden lead is a is curse about word to around call here. you about to call you and chew you out i know i just bought five rolls of his tungsten tape too i'm i'm a bad example how dare you <laughs> okay moving I on i know anyways so th that is a way you can increase twist weight on your paddle if you have like an edgeless one and it doesn't feel very good you can fix that with lead tape anyways edgeless almost always it's going to have a lower twist weight than one with an edge guard which generally speaking means it won't have as good of a sweet spot there are exceptions to this However, I still think most edgeless paddles are worse than paddles with an edge guard. They'll usually feel a little quicker in your hand because they don't have that weight. But 
most of the time, guys, I would say pick a, pick a paddle with an edge guard. There are exceptions, but largely edgeless paddles, while they're not a gimmick, they are not they're always the greatest. Better. Yeah. Yeah, they're not necessarily better. <laughs> it's trade offs. Yeah, it's trade offs. Okay, next up, we have thermoforming or some sort of unibody construction. Basically, this is where the walls of the paddle are kind of sealed and closed, making the paddle stiffer and therefore generating uh, more power because the paddle is essentially stiffer. Now, the durability tends to be a little worse than Gen 1 paddles because, you know, we've had problems in the past with core crushing, core corruption, um, uh, and just, I guess, durability in general. Um, but I think that the pros, if you find a good one or one from a reputable company, I think thermoforming is better and superior than just regular Gen 1, like, sandwich paddles that you'd find, like, in the Vanguard uh, control. Uh, that's not to say that it is for everyone. I think it's totally fine if you're new to the game and you want to pick it up a Gen 1, uh, you know, paddle because, you know, you want to learn the soft game. Um, and then if you think you need more power, you can move to a thermoformed unibody paddle. So that's all we have to say about that right there. You have anything Real quick. Add? Yeah. yeah, real quick on that note. So thermoforming tends to have a larger sweet spot, more power than a Gen 1. And for those mm -hmm. of you who don't know what a Gen 1 is, this is kind of a review that the, or a term that the reviewers coined to make a clear separation when these thermoformed paddles came out. Gen 1 just means that there is no edge seal where the core, like if you took the edge guard off a thermoform paddle, you can't see the core. It's sealed off, there's a carbon seam. On a Gen 1 paddle, if you took the edge guard off, there would be no edge seam and you could immediately see the core. So that's all we're talking about when we say Gen 1 versus Gen 2. So you'll often hear people say Gen 1, they're softer paddles, more control oriented. Gen 2, usually power, stiffer, larger sweet spot. So if you didn't know those terms, that's what they are. Nice. Okay, next up, surface type. We have three listed here that I think are the most you know, prevalent. Fiberglass, Kevlar, carbon fiber. These are the three surfaces that I don't know, you should be looking at for the most part. Um, you want to go explain what these three yep. are? And yeah, go ahead. So carbon fiber, by far going to be the most popular one that you see in pickleball right now. Most paddles are using it. And if you see a company say raw carbon fiber, that's usually the blacked out surface on a paddle that you see. You're not going to see a lot of graphics on it. Raw carbon fiber paddles to this day have tended to prove the best for spin. So if you care a lot about spin, a raw carbon fiber paddle is the way to go. Then you also have Kevlar and fiberglass. Kevlar is newer to the block. It feels pretty similar to carbon fiber, but a little less stiff. Not mm -hmm. a big difference between them. There are differences, but it's going to be more subtle. And if you're not dialed in with a lot of different paddles, you may not see a giant difference. Kevlar paddles, depending on the texture they add, can have as good of spin as raw carbon fiber. Some paddles use a different uh, grit process, and it results in worse spin. Not going to go super deep on that. All you need to know is that Kevlar carbon fiber, relatively similar. Mm -hmm. Fiberglass... You actually don't see that used very much anymore. The only time you really see fiberglass is when they do like carbon fiber and fiberglass and they combine them. Fiberglass will feel a little bit more, how would you explain it? I don't know if stiff is the right word, but you'll get more pop off of it than yeah. carbon fiber. But in the past, fiberglass paddles did not feel as good. They weren't as forgiving. So carbon yeah. fiber kind of took over. You feel the vibrations. So it's poppy, but you also feel the vibrations like that come through the impact. Like it reverberates through the paddle face and it transfers throughout the paddle into the handle and you can kind of feel it a little bit more. So the feedback is, you know, some people will call it stiffer. Some people will say it's more responsive. Some people like it. Some people don't. Um, and like, I don't wouldn't say it's better. I would say it's... I would say it's more powerful than Kevlar or carbon fiber, uh, but at least the old fiberglass paddles kind of don't have the spin performance that Kevlar or carbon fiber does. Although there are some companies that have done, you know, a process to make it, I don't know, as gritty, you know, as raw carbon fiber with a peel ply textured surface. So I don't know, we might see a comeback, you know, with them, uh, but, uh, 
you know, there are good ones out there. Yeah, I think more than likely what you'll really see is just the combo services like Selkirk 002, Carbon Fiber, and a fiberglass fiber layer, glass. the 11624 Hirachi X, Carbon Fiber, fiberglass layers like mixed together. You're not going to probably nope. pick a solely fiberglass paddle in this day and age, but a few of them do exist. Raw Carbon Fiber is more so what you want to be looking for for most people. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on, uh, are cheaper brand, or is a cheaper brand equivalent to a high-end brand? This is actually an interesting thing in pickleball. Paying more does not mean you will get a better product. It's not like a lot of things where, hey, the $100 one and the $250 one, there's a big difference. Now, some paddles, there are, but there are a lot where, you know, for example, the Yola Perseus is $250. I could name a bunch of thermoformed paddles that range from $100 up to 180 that perform equally as good, if not better. And in terms of dollar, uh, you know, performance and value per dollar, tons of paddles would beat the Perseus. So that's not always the case that spending more will get you a better product. You know, with like the Gearbox Pro Power, it's 275 you're not going to find anything that's even remotely similar to it. So if you want it, you have to spend the money. But there are definitely brands in that upper price range where you can find one that's cheaper and while maybe not identical, can be very similar or at least in the realm that's also very good for performance. Yeah. Agreed. Um, that's, I mean, shoot. You said it. You said it best. Move on to the next one. Uh, ignore yeah. most of the marketing fluff. Kevlar durability yeah. from six zero was said to be more durable, and you said that's wrong. You want to explain that? Yeah. So this is one. You know, you guys just kind of have. To, you have to be around for a while to, I guess, really get used to this. Sometimes I forget that. You know, we've been doing this for several years now, so we've kind of seen the trends, but. For example, 6.0 when the Ruby came out, they were like, Kevlar, more durable from grit or more durable than uh, carbon fiber. It's better. It's going to last longer. Well, for everything I've seen on the Ruby, people are complaining about it feeling very smooth within a relatively short amount of play. Now, smooth does not necessarily mean always that you're getting worse spin. John did a mm -hmm. test, and I think he only lost a few hundred RPMs in several months of use. So it's still getting good spin, but they're, you know, at, shortly after the Ruby, they were like, oh, don't use a rubber eraser on it because it'll actually damage the Kevlar surface. And then some people felt their paddles just weren't getting as good of spin compared to raw carbon fiber in the same amount of time. So like just because a company claims something does not mean it's true. And also companies make ridiculous claims all the time, like Vulcans, like we use the most sophisticated, highest rarest carbon fiber on the planet and we have you know like if you just look at some of the terms they use on the website you're like this is ridiculous <laughs> and like you're totally making this up so if if a company <coughs> brands something ridiculous like c4 polymer explosion core yeah it's probably something ridiculous like explosion core i, I dude i'm telling you that companies come up with the dumbest things so like you know you got to learn quick. how to yes I want to give a shout out to bread and butter because on their paddles, it says designed in outer space. If you look yes. at it, you know, so they lean into the ridiculousness, but you know that they're kidding, but it's still so funny. You know? Yeah. There's a way to do it where it's like, oh, hey, they're trying to be funny. Where like, you know, tons of companies <laughs> like, hey, let's just make up a different word for our polymer core that all of these paddles are using. But hey, C4 explosion core sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> like... So I just be aware that there's, that the <laughs> it probably exists. I bet you somebody's done it. I bet you somebody's done it. Okay. <laughs> but okay. anyways, just, yeah. there's tons of fluff. You guys are going to hear companies rebrand terms that other companies are already using. Like yeah. they'll make up a term for thermal forming. So mm -hmm. just the, be aware of that. There's a yes. bunch of it. Well, speaking of that, the worst kind of like saying or gimmick in all of pickleball, like marketing fluff is this all power all control like the best top tier you know control and power pal and it's not true there's those are like on opposite spectrum there has to be a trade-off 
somewhere. Like you can't, you really can't have both. There's compromise, you know, within that. So if they say that, you know, it's it's BS. Yeah, I, there are definitely paddles that can be more balanced than others. But anytime I see a company say, yeah, this is like the ultimate control paddle, but also it's just hits harder than anything you've ever hit. I'm like, okay, you're full of it. Like it's one of the, not always one or the other, but more often than not, if you have one way a or bunch another. Of, exactly. It's like a teeter totter. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, this is kind of long, but you've, uh, you've made it here to the kitchen now. And uh, yes. Chris, you want to talk about your first kitchen little story or not really a story, but an event that's coming up. Yeah, so this coming week, we have the Minnesota PPA. uh, Excited for this tournament. It's always a fun time. It's really fun having, you just have so many of our locals there that all know each other. So it's fun to kind of support your friends and cheer. Like the atmosphere feels better than say, like if I went to California for our PPA, Uh because there's just more people I know. So you just kind of all support each other in a big group. But I will say, I cannot wait to watch these pros use the Vulcan ball on the indoor surface that we have at this lifetime because this surface every year the pros complain about it (laughs) because it's like a hard court built on top of like a gym floor or something similar underneath so the ball does not bounce very high i watched james ignatowich completely whiff a server turn last week and now you combine that with a vulcan ball that it just can't bounce to save its life you're gonna see complaints. I promise you, from this tournament, people are gonna be complaining. You think some pros are not showing up, right? Yeah, you don't have like any of the top guys because I think they all just hate this surface that we play on. Ben's not coming. Annalie's not coming. Riley isn't. Uh, and there's probably some other notable exceptions that I'm not aware of. But yeah, you, you're definitely missing people. Oh, okay. Well, I guess this tournament's gonna be wide open. We'll, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it'll be interesting um, to see. But I'm doing um, 5-0 doubles. This will be the first time I've, well, whoa. not technically the first time I've played 5-0. I played 5-0 with Shay like two years ago, oh, a year yeah. and a half I ago. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember Way that. sooner than I should have, but that's what Shay wanted to play, so we played 5-0. But now I'm doing it for what feels like the first real time where I feel like I could actually compete with 5-0. So I'm excited to see how I do. I think it'll be kind of who, fun. And then who are you playing 4 with? five for single. Uh, my brother Patrick. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, all right, should all be right. a good and time. Four or five singles. Yes, yeah, gonna be a really good time. Should let me know how it goes. Report back. Yep. All right, it'll be a and... it'll be a good time. And then last thing I had just about this is uh, we have a bu- <laughs> there was a bunch of posts in our uh, just on Facebook from our Minnesota people, but I think in f- more than four of our Minnesota teams are playing each other first round oh, in the pro the bracket. The worst. In the pro bracket too? In the pro oh. bracket. In fact, I think it was it was either singles or mixed. So there's three brothers, kind of like me, Patrick, and Isaac here, mm-hmm. That, but they all play pro. Two mm-hmm. of them are playing each other first round in like singles or mixed. And I was like, imagine you pay the highest entry fee, the biggest tournament in your state. And who do you play first? Your, your brother. flipping brother. Shoot, I mean, well, hey, you'll have something to talk about around the dinner table, you know? Shoot. <laughs> sure. Yeah, remember Hopefully that time you brothers. booked me in 2024? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I already know. I already know because of how many Minnesota teams in pro are playing each other first. I already know I'm playing Isaac first round at the PPA. <laughs> oh, he's playing 5-0 as well? Yeah, he's playing 5-0. We're going to send him home. Okay. <laughs> He's we may have lost to him and his partner in every time we've practiced, but I'm going to do what you did. I'm going to win where it matters. That's right. There you go. <laughs> take take it from me. Win where it matters. Let's go. He's listening. Yeah. He's editing this right now. He's shaking his head. He's like, that's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> For sure. That's exactly okay. what he's doing. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, last thing I'll say is that uh, you have a tournament. I also have a tournament uh, this coming weekend. Uh, I'm going to be going to... Austin to go visit my good buddy, our good buddy, Jeff Lee, and uh, I'm going to be playing a team tournament with him in San Antonio this weekend. Should be a good time. Uh, never been to San Antonio, so I'm going to be in Austin for a little bit in San Antonio. I think I'll be just traveling back and forth. So, I mean, if you see me, come say what's up. Love to meet you. Maybe we'll get some games in. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, that's all I got. I will say thanks for hopping on, Will, because 
for the you guys wouldn't know this, but right now it's currently midnight while we're recording this pod, and Will just came back from three hours total of driving today after playing pickleball. <laughs> yeah, so, after playing some intense pickleball. <laughs> Yeah, this is the latest pod we've ever done. So I salute you for even hopping on. I wouldn't even have blamed you if you were like, yeah, I'm not hopping on tonight. Nobody should ever doubt my dedication to this pod ever again. Well, I doubt it when you're not in focus. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We'll catch you guys next week. (laughs) 